What's up brothers? This is Justin with Masonic Improvement. Um, today I want to talk to you about why I quit Freemasonry. But before I get into that, please go ahead and hit subscribe if you would. It'll keep you up to date on my content. I usually release one or two videos a week. So if you enjoy this or if you enjoy anything else I produce, be sure you, you hit that subscribe button so that you can keep up with me. So why did I quit Freemasonry? Well this actually happened uh, probably almost 10 years ago when I first got into the fraternity. Now, see, at the time when I joined here in Texas, you could not actually sit in a stated meeting unless you were a Master Mason. So uh, I went through all the degrees. I worked really hard on learning all the memory work because uh, that's really all that they expect you to do is just learn the memory work. And um, so I worked really hard on that. I went through the EA and I went through my field craft and I finally did the, you know, the master's degree, learned all that work and turned it in. I was finally able to sit in stated meetings. And so I go to my first steady meeting, and it's just a business meeting. All they all that they did was they opened and they closed. Uh, they talked about the bills. They talked about uh, the fundraiser. We did a uh, like a like a a biannual fundraiser uh, when, and I think I talked about this before. But we did a biannual fundraiser. So twice a year we did like this huge thing to uh, raise just enough money to pay the bills, and that that was it. And so. I learned very quickly that either we were planning a fundraiser or, or we were talking about how one did and then we'd be planning it right again. And so that, that, was, that, was, that was all we ever did. So I went through all this work, I put all this effort in and um, so I started sitting in the meetings and there was nothing going on. There was nothing. And so I was, I had this revelation as, as we were preparing, we were actually, it was the day of one of these fundraisers. It was a, it's a barbecue, what we did, we, so we cooked barbecue and then we sold it. And I was loading waters onto this, onto a dolly, and just stacking water on there. And I, I just had this, just revelation just occurred to my mind. It's like this is just a service organization. This is just like the Lions Club or or something like that. And not to say there's anything wrong with the Lions Club, but that's not what I thought I joined. And so I had this revelation that you know it's just just a service organization. And I finished that day, you know, I finished helping that day, but I just, I just didn't go back. So I stopped going. I became inactive. And this happened for, this went on for probably a year or maybe two years. I just, I just stopped going. And my, my dad, who was a member of that same lodge, and my granddad, uh, you know, both members of that lodge, part of the reason I joined to start with, they kept trying to get me to come back. And I'd, I'd come every once in a while just to learn, you know, just to realize there's nothing really going on, you know, and it just... And it just always seemed odd to me because that's, you know, I mean, I reached this conclusion, you know, it's basically the service organization, but why was there all this memory work? Why were there rituals? Why was, why was all this uh, symbolism and allegory and, and, and mystery involved in it if all you're going to do is just turn out some barbecue? And it never really, it never really clicked with me, you know, there was like this disconnect between what the fraternity actually was and what we did in practice. And I always was kind of aware of that, but it seemed to me that, I mean, even when I visited uh, the lodges in the area, I mean, that's all that they did. It's just, you know, and then they'd give awards and once one pat each other on the back. And that's that's all there was to it. It's just uh, raising money and giving away and, and complaining about how nobody showed up. And then, and that was, that was, so basically all the lodges I visited is the same old song and dance, you know. Open, uh, pay the bills, complain about no one showing up, uh, and, and and leave. Oh, and talk about fundraising, and then leave. And and normally, after they close, everybody leave as fast as they could. So anyway, so so that's that. And then fast forward a few years, and I don't really, I don't really know what caused this to happen, but I just one day randomly. I decided, you know, I do some research on fraternity. I just kind of, you know, because, you know, I had just told my dad, you know, I'm not going anymore. I'm not really interested in that. And for some reason, I just, you know, I started thinking about. It. I was like, you know, I remember why I didn't go, and that's all the all the nonsense that goes on. But I also remember, you know, what I said earlier. You know, there's all this ritual and mystery and symbolism. It's like, why is this there? If this is all we're doing, so I went online and I started googling. And I think I specifically typed like Texas Freemasonry. And it took me to, uh, at the time, the website was, I think it's Masons of Texas, and now it's My Freemasonry. 
But at the time, it was Mesa, Texas, and I mean, it's still it's still a really great website, and I moderate on there, and uh, and they have all kinds of articles and everything. And so I just I don't know I don't know what it was. I just started reading the articles, and um, it wasn't your typical run of the mill articles because like we've all heard the Tyler talks and and you know all the stuff the Grand Lodge has put out, and it's none of it's really inspiring or particularly interesting. I'm sorry. Or at least it wasn't to me. Some people probably like that stuff, but you know, for me, I was like, you know. But anyway, so I started reading these articles. And I was like, hey, I haven't thought about this, and they were they're approaching everything from a different from a different perspective, you know. Um, <laughs> so it's like it really caused you to reevaluate things. It's like, whoa, this lodge does things differently, you know. It's like, what if we did do things with 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 higher quality, you know? And so I would encourage anybody if you want to uh, go go to the website. I'll put a link below. Uh, do a search for the articles. Uh, there's ser several great articles. There's lots of them that were just just wonderful. At least, at least they were for me. You know, as a young Freemason, that was uh, pretty much lost. You know, and at the time it was exactly what I needed. And you know, as time has went by, I've read other things that you know are are really good also. But they're all really inspirational for me. So I um, they inspired me enough that I actually started going back. I joined. I got involved again. I started going back to my to my lo my old lodge, and I got into the line. And I started going through the chairs. You know, I was really passionate. I was still young, though. I still didn't really understand a lot of things. Kind of like the uh, the um, the importance of culture to get your organization on the track you think it should be. You need to approach it from a uh, more of a macro uh, cultural perspective than a micro uh, climate perspective. But these are all things I learned down the way. So anyway. And, and later on, things happened. I, I eventually, I, I left and all the changes that I worked towards kind of fell down the wayside. But that's, that's another post, I've, I've talked about that before previously anyway. So I'm not gonna really hit on that. But that's why I left the fraternity. Um, and, and eventually I came back. So the reason I'm sharing this with you is because I think there's something to be learned here. Um, we often wonder why we're losing as many members almost as we uh, initiate and put through the degrees. And granted, I don't represent everybody in the fraternity, but I think that I represent a population um, where, again, I don't re represent the entirety of that population either, but there's something there. And, and there's something to be said, if I left for these reasons, other people did as well. And I know for a fact there's other people, you want younger people in the fraternity, we want younger people in the fraternity, totally get that. And the thing is, we're looking for something that most lodges aren't offering anymore. And that's, um, I mean, when I joined, there was, a, there was an air of mystery, there was an air of secrecy, uh, I, there was prestige associated with it. And you join, you go, I mean, almost, I hate to say, as soon as you join, I mean, as soon as you get that EA degree, that is all just blown out the window. And often, sometimes the first time you walk in that lodge building, it's just blown out the window. Um, I'm sorry. You see a bunch of guys sitting around eating bologna sandwiches, cussing, telling uh, crude jokes, and, and you know, and it's it, it's gone. I mean, this 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 marvelous thing that you have made up in your mind is just shattered by everybody just acting as basic and mundane as they can. And and a lot of the old timers, or a lot of people, I should say, not just the old timers, will say, well, that's what you get for having such high expectations. Well, you can say that, but you're losing these people. So, you know, <laughs> uh, it's just, it, it's just, it, you got two sides of the coin. Some people wanted to be so mundane and then other people wanted to be marvelous. And it's, it's you know, these people, the, the, the mundane people think the marvelous people are just out of their minds. The mundane people are saying, uh, you expect too much out of this 300 year old prestigious fraternity. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's just, the whole thing is counterintuitive. But anyway, so that's why I left and also why I came back. And that's just my story that I wanted to share with you. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, if you like the video, please hit like. Be sure to hit subscribe because I have a lot more I'm gonna throw out in the next few weeks and after that as well. So I'll catch you on the next video and thanks again for watching.